All right. Hi, folks. Bear Paul 7 here. We got a little treat for you today. We're going to do a little uh, deadlift uh, action. And we're going to mix it up with a little uh, easy curl arms, little biceps, triceps, like that. And we're going to mix it up with some uh, deadlift uh, movements. Deadlift is a pretty good overall uh, body exercise. Works your legs a little bit, um, your shoulders, your back, uh, upper back and lower back, your abdomen, uh, your calves, just your overall uh, core. Um, it's a good kind of a strength movement, but it's also just a good bodybuilding basic uh, movement, you know, like bench, squat, curls, uh, lat pulls. It's just a good bodybuilding movement. We're going to start out today um, with a little reading from John. John chapter 3. There was a man of the Pharisees named Nicodemus, a ruler of the Jews. The same came to Jesus by night and said unto him, Rabbi, we know that thou art a teacher come from God, for no man can do these miracles that thou doest, except God be with him. Jesus answered and said unto him, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Nicodemus said unto him, How can a man be born when he is old? Can he enter the second time into his mother's womb and be born? Jesus answered, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, Except a man be born of water and of the Spirit, he cannot enter into the kingdom of God. That which is born of the flesh is flesh, and that which is born of the spirit is spirit. Marvel not that I said unto thee, ye must be born again. The wind bloweth where it listeth, and thou hearest the sound thereof, but canst not tell whence it cometh, and whither it goeth. So is every one that is born of the Spirit. Well, born again. Probably everybody's heard various ideals of what being born again means. Each church group, pseudo church, cult, false religions got their ideal of what you should do to enter the afterlife. Uh, so forth and so on. The nirvanas, the, the, uh, the, the third world, the spirit world, uh, Elysium, Valhalla, all their various worlds. But the reality is there is only one afterlife. It's either life or death. And where that is, you'll find Jesus Christ. You'll not find all these false prophets of the world, false religions, false teachers. You won't even find your basic church leaders, your, your, your scribes, your reverends, your pastors. You'll find some of them there. Theologians, and you'll find some of them there. And what is interesting about this section, uh, about being a born again, you know, you got in the church, you got uh, various groups say, well, that means you got to be baptized. Uh, certain ones say, well, you got to take catechism or the Eucharist. Um, you have to talk in tongues. Uh, you have to jump up and down. Uh, uh, be slain in the spirit. Uh, be sprinkled with water. Uh, all these weird things. And, and uh, they're not all weird, you know. Don't get me wrong. Um, but that's their ideology, their ideology of, well, what this means. That's their weird ideology. The reality of it, God gave the example. And being born of the Spirit is something God does. 
when a man turns his heart to the one true God through Jesus Christ. We admit we're sinners, I mean, throughout the Bible. The, whenever there's a man on conversion, coming to the knowledge of the truth of our purpose for being on this earth, he realizes his sinfulness, his worthlessness apart from God. He realizes he needs a savior, then boom, God says, now you're talking. Now you're talking. When a man or woman does that, God can move in a person's life, just like it says in John 3 here, like the wind blowing through the air. You didn't see it. You don't know where it came from, but it blew. God made it blow. And in your heart, God blew through and changed you because of the attitude of your heart. That is being born again, not being... These are all good things, you know, baptism and taking, uh, you know, communion, all. but those are all picturesque type things. The born-again experience is very clear. God says, you don't know where the wind comes from. That man is not controlling the wind. It does not happen in catechism, baptism, being coached into talking in tongues, taking the Holy Eucharist, you know, all that rigmarole, all these rope things. God does it. God does it in the spirit of Jesus Christ. God causes the powerful change in your life. And that don't make us spectacular people. It just means you've you realized your purpose in this creation, to be born again and to know the truth of God in Jesus Christ the Son. All right? And as we get up and we realize we have come to the knowledge of God, we're born again, folks. And that's why you can find so many theologians, pastors, preachers, priests. They're not born again. They've chosen the Bible as a work in their life. They study it. They talk about it. They stand up on a platform. They do the, the, all the rituals. But they don't know him. They don't know Jesus Christ. And it's obvious by the fruit in their life and how they live their lives. And so, we're going to talk about that a little bit more in between sets here. Uh, but I don't want to wear you out. I'm going to get off my soapbox now and um, put the Bible aside. And we're going to get into um, some deadlifting with little arms, little arms blasting on the easy curl bar here. And uh, so we're going to make a little shift from the spiritual to the bodily here. And it's all going to be one movement. So, here we go. We're going to start out with some easy curls. And that'll be for the biceps. Hope you don't mind a little sweat pouring off bear paw here. It's summer edition bear paw seven bodybuilding, and uh, we got a little heat going on, and that's good. So here we go. Keep the pores clean. Here we go. All right. Three, four. Five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. All right. Now, we're going to shift the old, we did uh, easy curls. Now we're going to roll it around and we're going to change over to uh, some tricep extensions laying on the bench. And that's really good for our triceps, our little Horseshoe muscle out there. So here we go. And we're going to try and get 12 here. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. All right, that's good. Now we're going to move over here to the deadlift area. I'm hoping you can capture this, and best you can. It's just a standing movement, and uh, we're going to take our hand grips and we're going to alternate them one in, one out, so the bar don't roll out. I mean, I'm kind of about a third halfway into my workout here, and so my sweat's uh, coming on pretty good. 
And so I'm probably going to change over the gloves here shortly so that I don't roll the bars out of my hands. But when I'm doing the deadlift, I'm going to rotate my hands here so they kind of work against one another and they kind of keep the bar locked into the pocket, just like that. All right, so I'll just rotate one in like this. And then we're going to kind of just do a nice, almost like a half squat, except we ain't going to have the bar on our back. We're going to have the bar in our hands and in our arms and in our shoulders and in our back and on our legs and on our calves. Kind of a nice movement. Here we go. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. All right. All right. Now I'm going to sit down here with you, chew the flat for just a little bit. Then we're going to stack on a plate. Plate here, plate here. Another plate here. Then we're going to pyramid up a little bit in our set. So if you go through some of the Bear Paw 7 bodybuilding videos, got the winter edition and the summer edition, there's a pretty good mix-up of various workouts that you can try and experiment with or use part of one and part of another and do something that works for you. You know, this isn't the ultimate workout. There is a much better, more proportional, greater, stronger bodybuilders out there and you can watch their videos, catch a little something from them. You know, there's, there's a lot of various exercises. Just find something that works for you uh, apply it uh, in your bodybuilding workout and hopefully you can apply a little bit of the Bible to your, uh, to your life in the faith of Jesus Christ. Uh, and if you have not come to faith in Jesus Christ, it's very simple. Do just that. Admit your sinfulness. Turn to Jesus Christ. God save me. Forgive me. I want to know you. As simple as that. Change your heart. Change your attitude. That's what it means to be born again. God will do the rest. It don't mean you're going to be perfect. You will make some sins happen in your life. I've been saved uh, since uh, 1978, 1978. And uh, so that's 30, 33 years for me. I have, my, have had my peaks, I've had my valleys, but I've wanted to please God. I've wanted to know Him. I've wanted to, to do the right thing for Him. But, you know, like I said, we're, we're, we're men given to... Uh, fleshly action, so uh, every day is uh, get out of bed, uh, break off your, uh, your horns, and start anew, you know, every day. And uh, when you wake up in the morning, you realize yesterday wasn't so good, break off the horns again, start anew, you know, break off your demon horns and uh, confess your sins to the Lord Jesus, say, God, forgive me, and start again today. And that's what being born again is all about. It's, it's uh, you know, there's nothing uh, uh, rhodical about it of, of, of any organized church um, method. Jesus wasn't really a, per, uh, 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 a teacher of method. He was a teacher of the heart. He said, change your heart, change your attitude. Because salvation is a choice. You can't teach it. You can raise your children up in it, day in and day out. But the day will come, and they will have to choose for themselves, because God is not a dictator. He doesn't force anybody to serve him or to love him. It's a choice. And so, with that, I'm going to get off my soapbox again here. We chewed the flab a little bit. Now we're going to slap on a couple plates, and we're going to pyramid up a little bit. And uh, I think I'm going to throw on my uh, workout gloves here. This my sweat's rolling pretty good. When I was in high school, I wrestled. 
Now, I wasn't a very good wrestler, but I learned a lot of things. And our coach made us train in a workout room that was called the oven. <laughs> and there was a good reason for that name, the oven. And uh, somehow that really stuck to me and realized how good that is for you to work out in a, in a hot environment. I mean, uh, I'm going to give you a little flashback here to wrestling 20, 30 years ago in high school. It was a room probably, I don't know, probably three times the size of this bear den here. It was the summer, mind you. And the heat was cranked on full blast in that room. So, you can see when the little door, there was a black door. It was called the oven. It was a metal door. When that baby slammed, you know, it was about to get serious. And the coach was merciless. And you know what? I thank him for it. I thank him for it. I won't tell you his name and, and really I don't want to... You know, be caught in plagiarizing what somebody else did, but it was uh, uh, working out in a in a sauna-like environment for me is fantastic. Because in Wisconsin, it don't last long. Um, pretty soon, the winter hits, and uh, man, you got two, three, four layers um, to work out here in the Bears Den. So, all right, here we go. We got to slap on a couple more plates here, and we'll be ready to go for another round of deadlift. mind you don't have to use an Olympic bar, Olympic plates. You could use the easy curl bar to do deadlifts. I'm just kind of mixing it up a little bit. I got a standard bar here. I do various exercises with that. and We've used it before. We'll be using it again. And uh, you can do deadlifts with that. You can do dumbbells for uh, deadlifting. You could use the uh, that new handle bell thing they got. You know, they got like a little bell shaped thing with a handle on it. You can get a couple uh, 25, 50, 100 pounders, one on each side. Let them hang to your sides and uh, do the deadlifts that way. Um, a, lot of, a lot of ways you can do deadlifts. So I'm going to slip on my gloves and uh, we're going to go. And I move on in our workout here. I need some gloves on. And I'm going to check our time. See how our time's doing. Oh, yeah. I think I've been not chewing the flap too much today. Hope you don't mind. But I can't help it. It's a real pleasure to be here with you in a virtual kind of a way. And I hope that some of you out there are enjoying this. So, there we go. Got the old gloves here. And I'm going to start in with some easy curls. Here we go. <laughs> Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Now we're going to switch over to the tricep part of the exercise. And 
Hopefully you're catching some of the movement on the video. And the easy curl triceps are so fantastic, in my opinion. Laying on the bench, in my opinion, is one of the best tricep exercises. Like I like to do over the head dumbbell extensions when I'm doing uh, warm ups on my triceps. But I'm start when I start to put the weight on, then I like to switch over to the easy curl bar. They're just something very nice and comfortable about that movement in a lane with an easy, car, easy curl bar kind of situation. It's very comfortable, feels very good on the triceps and like I said, everybody's got to find what works best for them and what they're comfortable with. So here we go. clips on there but it's a really good idea all right here we go and lift I had to kill it on that one. I'm a little too sweaty today. Forgive me on that one. Even the gloves ain't helping today. A little too sweaty. But anyway, that's your uh, deadlift type movement. And uh, it's a good, it's a good movement. Like I said, it kind of puts your whole kind of core together, your, your leg, calf, hamstrings, thighs, glutes, lower back, upper back, lats, you know, your deltoids, your trapezoids, you're using your forearms using your biceps, you know, using your abdomen muscles. It's just a good, you know, all around uh, power movement. So, anyway, the uh, sweat factor on the, uh, on the deadlift is, is kind of a factor, you know, with the hands and the uh, gloves and so forth. So these gloves, these babies are a little bit too sweaty already. So anyway, I think you got the picture. Uh, deadlifts, little curls, little triceps, little teaching in the book of John. And uh, if I'm not mistaken, this is going to be uh, Bear Paw 7 bodybuilding number 118. And... This is going to be grouped in the uh, summer edition uh, bodybuilding with Bear Paw 7 uh, playlist. So, with that, I'm going to cut you guys loose. Uh, I'm going to finish up my workout. I uh, hope you have an enjoyable day, enjoyable week. God bless you in the name of Christ. Have a great week. Catch you later.